in this video. One mistake could injure or even worse, kill the gibbon. Accidents can happen super easily. And I've realized that leeches of Merapi Volcano are crazy about me. At Kalawit Sumatra headquarters, Rama is a young female Sia Mong at the intensive care unit at Kalawait Sumatra Clinic. She's dealing with really bad bacterial infections, acute diarrhea, and depression. Sadly, this is pretty common with the animals that come to Kalawait and were previously kept as pets. David and Rina are looking after her and trying to make sure she feels good and safe. In short, they're trying to save her life. They're making sure she doesn't rip out her IV and that she swallows her meds. Every bit of banana she eats and each sip of water she drinks is a victory. The fact that Rama and all these animals that humans have captured even exist, well, it just shouldn't. David and Rina are with Rama day and night. About 150 kilometers from Kalawait, Sumatra, something really cool is brewing. More precisely, at the Merapi Volcano State Reserve. I'm in Sumatra with Andre and Ferry right behind me. I'll be checking all the pre-release enclosures that were built on the volcano slopes. Such a beautiful forest. The plan was to get the animals into these enclosures a couple of days ago. But same old story, same old problem. Still waiting for the go-ahead from the authorities. <laughs> but it'll happen. You might hear it in the distance. There are siamangs singing. In this forest, there are only wild siamangs. There are no gibbons. That's why we picked this spot. We can't just release gibbons where there are already wild gibbons. The existing gibbons in the forest would attack and kill our animals. Gibbons are super territorial. The quality of this forest makes this reserve the perfect spot to release our gibbons. The location ticks all the boxes for the IUCN criteria. As you know, to release animals, it's not just about opening cages. With support from the Forest Department and your help, we built pre-release cages. The animals will stay here for a few weeks before being freed. That's what I'm here to check out today. The enclosure is few hundred meters that way. Uh, 
So we've been hiking up the volcano for a good hour now. The goal is to get as far away as we can from the last plantation. We obviously don't want the gibbons hanging out in the plantations of the villagers. We're over 1,500 meters above sea level. From this point, the cages, André explains, are scattered apart from each other. But we're done climbing because if we go too high, the vegetation changes and also there aren't enough fruits for the gibbons. Now we're actually moving sideways and I'll show you the cages. So it's really hard work getting to the site. Can you imagine having to carry the wire mesh all the way up here? What a challenge. And these trees are so beautiful. Now we are at the second cage. It's around 300, 400 meters from the previous one, like at the Siamang release site. If you've seen my other videos about the releases, you know how this works. Once the cage is opened, it basically becomes the heart of the Gibbons territory. And the places they guard, that's why they started singing in these cages. And that's why it's important to wait for all the Gibbons to sing at each of their cages. This way, each family knows there's another Gibbon family over there, another over there. This helps to avoid conflict before all the cages are opened. And it turns out the leeches from Merapi Volcano love me. Callaway Sumatra headquarters. At Callaway Sumatra, Rama's IV has been removed. She seems a bit better, but she's still really weak. Rina is still spending her nights with her. And the time has come to transport the animals from our center into the release site. Sixteen gibbons have to be caught. First, they need to enter the small cages connected to their big cage to be tranquilized. All the vets are ready, and David prepares to tranquilize the first gibbon with a blowpipe. It's hard to safely tranquilize a gibbon with a blowpipe. The outside of the thigh is the only safe target. And this gibbon seems nervous. He knows the blowpipe. David has to be patient and wait for the right moment. A wrong shot could injure or even worse, kill the gibbon. Accidents can happen so quickly. He can't afford mistakes, he has to stay calm. Control breathing. David pretends to shoot to observe the gibbon's reaction. He needs to anticipate his reaction. It's a tense moment as the whole team watches and holds their breath. You just hung on for one minute and 40 seconds to see David blow dart this gibbon. Unfortunately, I don't have the footage. My bad. 
But David did manage that, and now the Gibbons off to the clinic. We're taking a blood sample to make sure the animals weren't given any human diseases. So, they are all set in the transport cages. The animals don't get what's going on. It's going to take two days, six cars and five motorcycles to get the animals to the release site at Merapi Volcano Reserve. Some animals are cool as long as there's food around. But the final stretch is an absolute killer when you have to lug the cages on motorbikes and on foot. The animals are spread over eight sites based on the location of pre-release enclosures. The team must walk for one to two hours. It's draining, physically and mentally. But the thought that they'll soon be free is a real buzz. Catch you in another vid soon, promise. When we finally get to open the cages. Thanks for backing us. And don't forget to become a friend on our website, Callaway.org.